Hi, I'm Michael Gordon. We had a range of data releases this week, the sum of which was that the economy still appears to have some pretty strong momentum. Firstly, we had the monthly filled jobs indicator, which is based on tax data, which rose 0.4% in May and is now above its pre-COVID level. Workers are clearly in hot demand at the moment, and the data suggests that those vacancies are indeed being filled. Interestingly, our early estimate is that job ads actually fell from their highs in June. So if that holds up, that suggests that the rush to find workers may have passed its peak. The June Business Confidence Survey suggested that firms are getting more upbeat about their own prospects, but rising costs are a growing issue, and many of them are hoping to raise their prices within the next few months. Now there's good reason to think that inflation is going to spike higher this year, but that's not the horizon that the Reserve Bank should be focusing on. For them, the bigger issue is more about price pressures and capacity constraints as we're heading into next year and beyond. We also had the fiscal accounts up to May. We're just two months away out from the budget and revenue's already running almost $6 billion ahead of forecast. That's not because the economy's been unusually strong, it's more because the forecasts were unusually low. So by the next fiscal update, the government's once again going to find itself with room to both increase spending and reduce its borrowing. Finally, we had building consents for May. They were down a little bit from April's record high, but the annual pace is still setting fresh highs. There's plenty of work going on in Auckland, which has accounted for almost two-thirds of the growth in consents in the past year. Now that does reflect the scale of the housing shortage that Auckland had built up in past years, but it also reflects the impact of the unitary plan in enabling more building and more medium density building in particular. Talk to you next week.